If you have Shimano Di2 6870 or 9070, you can now do synchronized shifting. Here's how. Welcome to Gadget Blues. This is KC, and today we are going to talk about Shimano's recent announcement that they have made synchronized shifting for DI2 available to the older group sets, the 6870 and the 9070. And I'm going to show you how to upgrade those older group sets to support the new synchronized shifting. I'm doing this in part because some of the reporting on how to do this in the press was a little bit incomplete. They said, hey, you need a new battery to enable this. And that is true, but not the entire story. You need a new battery if you're running an internal battery. But if you're running an external battery, you need a new battery mount. And you're also going to need to upgrade your firmware. So first, let's look at what parts you need, depending on what kind of bike you have at the moment. To start with, you need to have 6870 or 9070 Di2, and that's easy to tell because that's all 11 speed. If you have a 10 speed Di2, you can't upgrade to synchronized shifting, but if you have 11 speed, then you're good to go. You just need the new battery or battery mount and firmware upgrade. Specifically, if you have the original SMBTR2 internal battery, then you need the BTDN110 new internal battery, which has the new internal processor that supports the wireless module and supports synchronized shifting. So that's just a straight swap between the two. If you have the external battery, this battery is nothing but a dumb battery. It contains no smarts, no central processor for the system at all. In the external battery case, all of those smarts are in the battery mount. So this is the SMBTR1 and you can still use this battery with synchronized shifting. You just need the new external mount, which is the BMDN100 battery mount. You will see two versions of these available. There is the short version, which is about so long, and the long version, which is designed to go on water bottle mounts. The short version can go on the water bottle, but generally is used for under bottom bracket applications. Since you already have an uh, external mount, you don't really need to care that much about whether you buy a short or a long version because you can swap this part of it by removing these two screws here. So you can use the extension bracket from your existing external mount. So if you find a deal or you have one or the other out of stock, it doesn't matter. Just buy whichever one and swap the bracket over. If you're curious which external battery mount you have now, of course, you can use the firmware updater to check which parts are on your system. You can also flip up the clamp here and the model number is right under there. This is the old one, the SMBMR2. And of course, the new one is the BMTN100. Let's take a look at specifically what parts and tools you're going to need to perform this upgrade, which should cost you about $100 up to $200 if you want to add wireless capability or you don't have a Windows PC. First off, you're going to need either the new BTDN110 internal battery or the new BMDN100 external battery mount. Then you're going to need a set of standard hex wrenches. And if you are dealing with an internal battery, you're going to need a torque wrench for the seat post or seat mass topper. Then you're going to need a way to upgrade the firmware. And you can do that either via a Windows PC using the Shimano SMBCR2 external charger slash USB interface. That works on any Windows PC, basically Windows Vista or a newer, anything with a USB port. If you're a 100% non-Windows person, then you can do this wirelessly using the new EWW111 internal wireless unit. There's also an external version of this, the EWWU101, but I recommend the 111 because you can put it inside the frame. With this Bluetooth wireless unit, you can use any iOS or Android phone or tablet to perform the firmware upgrade and set the synchronized shift settings. Of course, I always recommend supporting your local bike shop, so get these parts from them. You might want to have them install them, but you can do this yourself in most of the scenarios. It's a five minute job 
and it doesn't take any real technical acumen. So I'll go into specifically what you have to do there. For the internal battery scenario, first you want to mark your seat post or seat mast so you can get the seat height back to where it was before. Then you loosen the clamp and remove the seat post or seat mast topper. The battery itself is going to be inside the seat post if you have a seat post type bike. And if your frame is using an ISP or integrated seat post, the battery is going to be inside the frame. In this case, it's an ISP type frame, so the battery is inside the frame. So we pull that out, it's held in there via this little bracket with an O-ring that keeps it from rattling around. The DI2 E-tube cable is plugged in the bottom of the battery here. We just unplug that. You need to make sure that that cable doesn't fall down inside the frame because you'll have a double of a time fishing it out. So I use a rubber band there to secure it around the seat mast. Then remove the little friction bracket from the end of the battery. Snap it onto the new battery. Plug the cable back in and reinsert it back into the frame or seat post. At that point, just put your seat post or seat mast onto the tape where you marked it and tighten it using a good quality torque wrench. I'm a bit of a fanatic about getting my torque correct on carbon frames, so I'm using a Snap-on CompuTorque torque wrench, but you can always use something a little less exorbitant than that. Just make sure that you don't over torque it. Then you're all done except for the firmware updating. For the external battery type, most of these are attached to the water bottle bolts using the long style bracket. So they're just the two water bottle screws holding on the battery mount. All you need to do is unplug the DI2 cable from the bottom of the mount, remove the battery, then use a hex wrench to remove the water bottle bolts, removing both the water bottle cage and the battery mount. Reverse that to install the new battery mount. Plug the DI2 cable back in. Reinsert the battery. And you are good to go. That is the easiest upgrade version. It can be a little trickier with the variant that uses the bottom bracket mount with the short type external battery mount. This looks just as easy, but bear in mind that not all frames have two threaded holes there to secure the battery mount. So in some of these cases, one or both of those screws might actually have a nut on the inside of the bottom bracket rather than a threaded insert in the carbon frame. If it's the type that has the nut inside the frame, then if you remove that bolt from the battery mount, it's going to drop the nut down inside the frame and you're gonna have a pain in the butt getting that one back out. So what I recommend doing here is if you have any doubts about how this is attached, just loosen each screw in turn and feel around to see if the screw itself has become sort of loose within the hole, indicating that there is a nut on the inside rather than a threaded insert. If it's the type that has one or more nuts on the inside, there's no way you're going to replace that battery mount without pulling the crank and sticking a finger inside the bottom bracket, holding that nut with one hand as you remove the screw with the other. That's what I had to do on this upgrade, but it really wasn't that big of a hassle. It's just something to be aware of. Try to avoid dropping that nut down inside the frame. So there you go. Those are the three most popular scenarios for the internal battery or the external bracket. 
Once you get the new internal battery or the new external mount installed, all you have to do is upgrade the firmware to enable the synchronized shifting and to enable compatibility with the wireless unit. As I mentioned, you can use a Windows PC with the Shimano USB interface or the wireless unit with an Android or iOS device in order to do that firmware upgrade. Even if you're using a Windows PC, I recommend picking up the wireless unit because you can do all sorts of cool stuff configuring on the fly. Imagine updating your firmware while you're sitting and having a coffee at Starbucks. I don't know, maybe that's a bike tech sort of geek thing, but I like the concept. If you want to see more about how the different software works with the DI2, check out my other video about 9150 First Impressions because in that video I cover the four variations of software, the iOS and Android app on both phone and tablet, which has slightly different functionality. That's it for today. I hope you enjoy your new synchronized shifting and please like and subscribe. We will see you in the next Gadget Blues.